Hey guys, we are live here for the Fight Fit podcast, episode number six with Dave Trotter. Um, Dave is one of our Fight Fit strength and conditioning coaches, and he has been at the forefront of the Fight Fit games, um, also with a background in the military. So tell us a bit about that, Dave. Uh, it's been uh, six years in the military. Uh, we had to do our initial training. I sort of basically decided to do it when I left school. I didn't really know what I wanted to, to do with myself. Mm. thought it would suit my personality. So I just did you, went, did you finish school then? Yeah. 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 Um, just went with it. Just sort of went through the processes. It sort of nearly takes a good near year, 12 what months. What do you have to do? You have to obviously sign up, go, go through a, like an audition. Yeah. Phase you or... basically speak to the recruiting sort of area and yeah. then they um, book you in for like an open day where they, you go and they give you all the information about the different sort of cause you can sign up to do and mm. um, what they all sort of entail. And then you sort of from there, you'll choose which avenue you want to sort of go down. Yep. Then you have to go and get your medicals, your psychological testing, uh, your fitness testing and things like that. So if you pass all that, then, then they give you a date as to when you can enlist. Well, what are the different sort of avenues you can do can you go down like air force or navy or marine you or, either sign up you marine? either sign up for navy air force or the army yeah is marine an american term yeah yeah okay. um and in in the in the arms or navy there's certain jobs you can you can do hmm. so i was in artillery that's what i chose um they basically said it was quite sought after at that time in terms of there was a lot of sort of opportunities going. So I just thought it would be the quickest avenue to get in and get amongst it. And then if I wanted to change after that to a different job or a different sort of core or something like that, that I could then transfer once I was already mm. in. And the training must have been pretty grueling. I mean, this is just basically my, my old man was in the army and he was, uh, he's a South, he's South African and he was in the army for South Africa and in the jungles of Angola. So he told me some pretty st crazy stories about his training. Yeah. Did you have many like gru grueling training sessions yeah. that helped mold you into the? There's a lot of yell like yelling, like yelling you into your face. Yeah. Uh, if you do, well, if you do right, right or wrong, it's mainly just to test you to see if you'll break. Mm. So there's a lot of that that goes on. Um, and what happens if you do break? Uh, sp suppose it depends on how much you break. Mm. Uh, your mental strength if if you really crumble then they probably send you to some sort of platoon where uh you almost have to go and prove your a mental of, state again a bit of paperwork or holding yeah. signs <laughs> just sort of prove yourself again that, yeah. that you're, you you can still do it type thing yeah um just there's a lot of uh, as i said a lot of yelling there's a lot of sort of mind games a little bit where they they try and do things to really test whether you're going to retaliate or not. Hmm. So w whether you're just going to follow orders, which is what they want you to do, just get on with it. No matter what they tell you to do, whether it's, you know, that it's doesn't ridiculous, really make sense yeah. and it's ridiculous. You just got to, just got to do it. Hmm. So um, they do that, do it, do a lot to sort of, cause then when you're on the battlefield and you've got someone yelling at you, yeah, you got, you just got to react and you got to do what yeah. they say. You can't second, second guess it. Yeah. Yeah. Stories from old man about them having to um, run around. The, they'd be woken up at like two or three a.m. and they'd have to run around uh, like a field with with one of their comrades on their back. And if somebody dropped them, then everybody else would have to start again and yep. until they got it right. And just things like that to sort of hammer in teamwork. Did you yep. get much of that? Yeah, we got woken up at all types of the types of hours where we'd just have to come out with our sheets over our shoulder. Um, sometimes we'd told to just get dressed as quick as I can and be outside in two minutes mm. and you've, you've halfway you're well into a deep sleep and you just got to you just got to get up and get it and do it um, and you might have to go out and just go for a run or grab your pack and do a pack march or something mm. like that they just uh, as I said they'll, they'll just test you in a lot of different aspects do you, do you think it's necessary like to, to have it so hardcore um, I think it's 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 probably getting softer and softer. Hmm. The more they do it, because uh, That's the way the world's going, I guess. yeah, it's just um, the training's not as sort hmm. of grueling these days, and the minimum sort of requirements to get in fitness requirements they sort of are reducing things like that that I don't really agree with. Hmm. I was looking at the at getting into the fireys recently, and I think the beep test was like 
eight or something ridiculous. Yeah, like not, my grandma could much. do that. Yeah. I think the the army's actually less than that. It might be in only like seven, seven and a half, or maybe seven on the beep test, and like yeah. it might be f- fifteen push ups or not even, and then like thirty sit ups. So insane. it's um. But people used to still fail that. If someone can't do that, I do not want them defending my country. <laughs> That's there for was sure. someone that, was, when I was in there, that failed it like three or four times, and that was like their their next go at it. So there's yeah, there's some quite unfit people out there. Wow, well, hey, I can't imagine that. Um, so how have you sort of um translated that, I guess, mental fort into your martial arts career at the time and. And also your strength and conditioning career? So I started boxing when I was about 14, when I was going through school, just as a sort of a side training for footy, mm. just in between. Um, and then while I was in the military, I didn't, I did it a little bit, but not not that much, just because there's so much other stuff that you've got going on. And then when I got out, I got right into it again. And then I, that's when I started fighting. Uh, I started with doing amateurs then had a little bit of a falling out with my coach so then i thought i'd try something different and um there was a mma gym up the road so i went and checked it out and started off just doing muay thai training hmm. uh, had a couple of fights with muay thai and then the opportunity came to get into mma uh which i took and um got to fight over in chicago with that uh, which was really good and re- really good experience and uh um, but then I, I started at Fight Fit and um, just the work to training hours and, and uh, the injuries that you get from mixed martial arts and things like that. I sort of Especially had Especially from like wrestling and yeah, stuff like that. The guys blow out their started knees. Started getting and sort of elbows mm-hmm. and hyperextensions and things like that where I couldn't help pads for my clients and things mm-hmm. like that. So sort of got to the point where I felt that I um, needed to choose. Mm. Um, so then I, yeah, I stopped mixed martial arts training and I, I, th- I had another one or two boxing fights, just, just boxing fights after that. Um, which one I got called up. Um, I was just doing, when I first sort of started at fight fit, I was just doing the fight fit challenge training with the group just as a trainer, but just doing the, the training, uh, I wasn't looking at fighting or anything like that, but, um, I, um, got asked to fight one guy that. He uh, he came and did a fight fit challenge earlier on, and he did okay. But then he went off and started boxing at a um, a, a a good fighters gym, and then came back and wanted to do it again, and had improved it quite a lot. Mm. And basically, was throwing his weight around a little bit, and thought he was pretty good, and sort of called me out and asked if I wanted to fight him. Mm. Um, and I was yeah, I was all I didn't really You're mind, and yeah, yeah, did. Not, didn't do too bad. <laughs> yeah, how'd you go? Did you win? Yeah, I won. Yeah, yeah, that's good, man. Uh, so, um, yeah. So you've done the good. fight fit challenge then as well, pretty well, much. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. it was sort of. It you wasn't on wasn't night. really planned. Yeah. 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 What but, did you um, think of it? It was great. As, as compared to your other fights, um, it, like the, all the high, <clears throat> the the big crowd and the the state, like the sort of the stage with the lights and everything's really good. Mm. Um, anything that you go to any amateur boxing or anything like that, it's the there's not really a crowd and there's not really any flashy lights or anything like that, which can be uh, positive for some people that don't want that. But um, I'd sort of done both. And I had a lot of my mates there that came and watched when they um, worked out I was fighting and uh, yeah. my mum and my family and things like that came and watched as well. So that was that was good, especially yeah. when you win. So so you don't think you'll do any more fights then? No, nah, I've got two kids now mm. and um, wife. So it's, uh, it's a lot of different... There's a lot of time. It's a, it's it's quite a selfish sport to do. Mm. As even as a single man, I, yeah. I I find it very hard to. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of time that you need to dedicate. Um, I because I've started going getting into more CrossFit training now. I mm. weigh more like 85 ish kilos when, but when I was fighting, it was more like 70 kilos. Mm. So to fight again and to lose all that weight, and sort of starve myself and all the rest of it, because if I was going to take it seriously again, I would potentially yeah. have to get back to 70 exactly uh, the with same. my height so exactly the just... same here mate i I would, <clears throat> I would love to have another fight but um in order to do that i think i'd have to go through the fight fit challenge training again that's probably the most realistic possibility for me yeah is doing the fight fit um challenge training again yep. and losing all that weight again because it's a bit hard to do it by yourself I yeah think. used started it with a 
when I the first gym I started at when I first started personal training, one of the other trainers was was sort of getting into it, mm. and I he saw he said, "Do you want to join in on a couple of sessions as a bit of strength and conditioning for my fighting?" Um, so I I did that and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I just sort of kept rolling with it from mm. there, and he started running a few group sessions down at a an oval in um sort of Black Rock area. Uh, so I went to those and and it was a really good sort of uh add on to my training outside of obviously the fight training and everything to do mm. with that. So, and then I just sort of really got into it. When I stopped fighting, um, I was living down towards sort of Chelsea Frankston area. So I started at CrossFit Frankston. Yeah. Uh, the coach down there is, uh, uh, Rob Ford, who's sort of one of the CrossFitters in Australia. And, um, so it was really good to learn from him. And then, so I was there for maybe a few, maybe two or three years. Uh, and then, Basically, I moved up closer towards the city, mm. and um, so I stopped going to CrossFit Frankston and decided because Fight Fit's always had pretty good facilities for that. Now the facilities are, I, I don't miss out on anything. So yeah. um, I just do all my own strength and conditioning training that's CrossFit based myself. And what kind of training does that entail? A lot of uh, Olympic lifting, um, a lot of heavy lifting. What is Olympic lifting? Uh, Olympic lifting is oh, like Olympic lifting lift. lifting that you would see in the Olympics. So like okay. you snatch, yeah, clean and jerks, and then CrossFit have basically uh, broken those movements down into individual movements that you mm. can do, uh, and then you form up workouts that have those type of movements in it, as well as um, some own body weight like push ups, ch- chin ups, uh, box jumps. Then you've got cardio, there's running, there's rowing, there's assault bike, there's all these different things that you can sort of construct together to, to form your own workout. So mm. that's my style of training now that I do in my classes. So I always do a strength component, which for these last uh, few weeks, because of the fight for games has been, the strength component's been more your back squat, deadlift or bench press based. Yep. Before that, it was, it could be a, uh, clean and jerk or squ- front squat or or a different type of movement yeah but um leading up to these five fit games i'll focus more on the power power lifting sort of side of things for their heavy and then with that in mind formed a workout after that that has worked that area so it might have been uh say we did a bench press strength then the workout might have a lot of push-ups and still still might have some bench press work in it just at a lighter weight yeah. mixed with some other things just to get people ready for the, the strength and conditioning day as well mm. and how have the guys been going the, all the guys doing the challenge yeah, doing it the, seems um, like everyone's games. really really getting involved in it a lot of people getting good strength gains yeah that i've seen um their techniques getting really good um so it seems like everyone's really enjoying it and looking forward to the challenge of having the two different aspects in the in the competition. Yeah. Do you think it's progressing having, you know, guys like yourself and Mark Derrick um, and all of the sort of minds together to really sort of get the most out of the training and try and do it in the best, most efficient way possible? Yeah, I think um, everyone having their slightly different backgrounds with Mark Derrick having a really high sort of powerlifting background. And Neil, obviously, the and he's with his myotherapy recovery and stuff as well he's got really good um he really focuses on mobility Mm. and a lot of um technique based lifting sometimes it's it's simple but it's it's what some people need to break things down properly um i try and mix the two together so i don't Mm. focus too much on the power lifting and the strength but I, i still have it as an element yeah but i'll then make sure everyone gets a high intensity workout as well. Yeah. Do you guys tend to really do your own sort of things in the classes or do you bounce off each other a lot and try and um, balance it out? I've always ran my own sessions. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of sometimes probably clashed with Neil's cause he, he goes, I take my Monday, Wednesday night sessions and he yeah. takes the Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah. And sometimes people might double up on the same lift because mm. me and Neil haven't, spoken and it's been the same it might have been deadlift that i ran and he runs deadlifts the next day but yeah um it's just as long as people have got good recovery and make sure they stretch out and use the foam rollers and things like that and yeah if they are too sore 
then they can always speak to the trainers and yeah, um, obviously and ask to do something different. On that note, I remember I tried to do one of your classes as well, and uh, I started cramping in places I didn't know existed in my yep. body, in my wrists and my fingers and and all that. And you had to put me on a modified program, which yep. is a bit embarrassing. Everything can be <laughs> everything can be adaptable. That's what couldn't do. The, a bit, couldn't do the pull ups. People always get a bit scared off with my classes. They think that. They're going to have to do the things that everyone else does, mm. but anything can be scaled uh, and anything can be changed and adapted to suit an individual. So if they've got a little injury and they can't do something a certain way, then most of the time I can still work that same muscle group, but just tweak it a little bit so mm. that it suits where they're at. Um, so if, for, so the my classes that I run are for anyone that no one should be scared yeah. away from them because everyone in a sense has to start somewhere and uh, they just build themselves up gradually and work on their technique and gradually they'll get stronger and start putting more weight on and yep. so on and so forth. So, yeah, I encourage anyone, anyone to come. Ruan said that there was a day coming up. I've got my phone here just to double check which one it was. But Ruan said that there's a, a day coming up, the um, conditioning day. Yep. What, what does that entail? Is that supposed to be this Wednesday? I'm not too sure, but is that with, was that in an email? Yeah, Rowan said that um, to ask you about sort of what um, what the conditioning day entails. Well, I think he's talking about the second of the comp days. Okay. Because the first comp day is just straight powerlifting, so it's yeah. uh, trying you trying to find your one rep max bench yeah. press, deadlift, and squat, um, back squat. And then the Saturday after that, um, the 4th of May is the conditioning day. So that's when it's more of the high intensity stuff. Is that a new sort of thing? Is it? Um, not the, probably the powerlifting is the new part. Yeah. The, the last five fit games we ran was more the high intensity, mm. high reps. So we've tried to, to get a different aspect, putting a powerlifting day first. Yeah. So it sort of caters for everyone because there's some people that are really strong and want to try and test that aspect, which will be calculated off your body weight. So mm. you can't just be a massive monster and just lift heavy weights because <clears throat> it, what it's calculated mm. on is being as strong as you can, but also being as lean as you can at the same time. According to your own body weight. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's even for everyone. And then the strength and conditioning day will be constructed. Me and Rowan and a few other trainers are meeting soon to... Um, bounce off each other to construct that workout but it'll be probably a mixture of cardio own body weight a couple of um lifting movements that won't be overly complex um but will be testing for everyone yeah awesome so in your in all of your sort of experience in with in with the army and with your mixed martial arts days and strength and conditioning and crossfit do you have any story that particularly springs to mind about something that was particularly challenging for you? Um, not really. I don't really find many things challenging. I've always been pretty strong. Pretty open to those challenges. Yeah, like say something with my military. Um, I thought I... Basic went into everything, think it was going to be as bad as it could be, mm. and then anything better than that was going to be a bonus. Well, yeah, so that's a pretty good way to think about it. Yeah. In my mind, I was prepared for the worst mm. already before it started, and then, and then from there, if it was better than that, then it wasn't that bad. What about with with your mixed martial arts career though? Like, I, f I find it like for for anybody else, it would be so daunting to sort of step in that octagon and know that. Is it, was it in an octagon or yeah. is it, yeah? Yep. And know that, you know, you could get knocked out or yeah. you could get elbowed in the face. <laughs> never really cared about my welfare in that way, especially in that time when you're sort of young, you got a lot of testosterone and mm. I didn't really care about the injuries or the damage I would get. Mm. Um, yeah, it didn't really cross my mind. I was more always worried about just performing. Mm. and doing the best I can and not being disappointed in how I went in terms of the fight. Whether I won or lost, I didn't really mind. It was more about being happy with how I went. Yeah. yeah. So, um, 
So you'll be as competitive then? Yeah. yeah. Always been like with footy and everything. How many played football? Uh, played from under nines till played while I was in the military, actually, while I was up there. So probably under nines till I was about 20, 20 years old, 20, 20, 21. Yeah. Might have come out and played a little bit for St. B's Mentone when I got out. Um, but yeah. Which, which, where are you? Where are you living at the moment? I live in Truganina, down in out at the west. So I don't suppose you'd want to come down to the Bentley Demons and have a run, mate. <laughs> I would love to. I always get the itch. I always get the itch to do it. But again, the same same thing. It's um, it's one of those things. My work here would always clash with footy training. Yeah. And I work on every Saturday, and most games are obviously on Saturday. So my job would always clash with footy, and you just got to just got to pick. One or yeah. the other, but I always get the itch to, to want to play. Yeah, it's a bit like <laughs> that. Yeah, it's a bit like that. Anyways, mate, unless uh, there's anything else that you want to share with with the with the viewers, I think we can almost wrap this up. No, I'm all good. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, thanks, thanks for coming on, man. No worries. Awesome. Thanks so much.